Hi everyone, my name is Brittany and I am the designer behind Untitled Thoughts and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share some of my favorite super quick and easy scrap busting projects. I absolutely love finding new and creative ways to use the scraps that accumulate in my studio. For today, I've got three different projects to share. Bookmarks that can double as coasters, scrappy tea towels, and cord wraps. Everything has been timestamped below, so feel free to skip ahead to the project that seems most interesting to you. So if you're ready, let's dive right in. No, the maze ready. <laughs> The first project we're going to tackle are fabric bookmarks that also double as coasters. So to start, you want to cut out three five inch by five inch or 12.5 by 12.5 centimeter squares of fabric. I've gone ahead and cut two layers of my square at one time and then I am just going to lay that template on top of my contrasting fabric to get my third square. Next, cut two 5 inch by 5 inch or 12.5 by 12.5 centimeter squares of interfacing. I am using scrap bits of heavier muslin as my interfacing which is just another great way to use up your fabric stash. First, we're going to start by interfacing our fabric pieces. So cut one of your interfacing pieces in half on the diagonal so that you're left with one square and two triangles. Go ahead and attach your square piece of interfacing to one of the two matching fabric squares on the wrong side. I'm using sew-in interfacing, so I'm just going to sew this in within the seam allowance. But if you're using press-on interfacing, all you would do is press it on. Then attach your triangular interfacing in between your contrasting square so that it looks something like this. I'm just going to press this closed. and then base the two raw edges of my triangular bit shut. Now it's time to layer all your pieces together. Start by placing your non-interface square on your workspace with the right side facing up. Next, lay your triangular fabric piece towards the top right corner with the raw edges touching. Finally, lay your interface square on top of your triangular fabric with the wrong side facing you, and then pin all your layers together. Before we start sewing, mark one of the bottom edges with a little opening about one and a half inches or four centimeters wide. Sew around all your edges using a half inch or 1.3 centimeter seam allowance, starting and stopping at your marked points. I've gone ahead and reinforced the corners of my bookmark with a couple of extra back stitches so that it is nice and secure for the next step, which is trimming your seams and corners. Next, turn your bookmark right side out through the little opening and don't forget to poke out your corners using a chopstick or the end of a paintbrush. Next, you'll want to hide those opening seams inside your bookmark. Simply use your fingers to press them towards the inside and then pin your opening shut. Finally, top stitch around all four sides of your bookmark, roughly 1 8 of an inch or 0 0.3 centimeters from the finished edge. And voila, your bookmark slash coaster is complete. Wasn't that a super fun and fast project? Plus, it doubles as a great gift for the avid reader in your life. For our next project, we will be making some scrappy tea towels. To start, cut out a rectangular piece of fabric that is 17 inches by 26 inches or 43.2 centimeters by 66 centimeters. 
Or if you don't have a singular piece of fabric available in that size, try sewing together a few different scraps of cotton or linen material until you get the correct measurements, which is what I'm doing. I'm just cutting bits of rectangles from each of my fabrics and laying them out in front of me to see what might look good. And I'm going to keep doing this until I get to that desired measurement of my tea towel. Now I'm going to sew together each of the scrappy bits. So I'm starting with the rows first and I'm just sewing together each bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish each of my edges. I'm using a serger just for a really nice clean finish, but you can also do something like a French seam or a zigzag stitch. And once each of my seams is finished, I'm just pressing it flat. Now with all of my newly sewn together strips, I have laid the pattern back out and I'm going to attach them to the strip next to it. So I'm just going to put the right sides together and pin them. I'm also trimming any excess bits so that my seams are nice and straight. And with everything pinned together, I am simply going to sew each strip just as I did in the previous step until I have one full piece of fabric. Finally, just as I did before, I'm going to finish off those edges with my serger and then press each of the seams. So the final step of this project is to finish the edges of the tea towel. So I'm at my iron and I am pressing the longer edges towards the wrong side by half an inch or 1.3 centimeters, then again by another half an inch or 1.3 centimeters. Then it's just a matter of stitching your hem into place. Doesn't that look beautiful? Now repeat with the other long edge of your tea towel. And finally, we are going to press the short edges in the exact same manner as we did the two long edges and stitch them into place. Oh, I love a good corner. And voila, you've successfully sewn yourself a scrappy tea towel. I absolutely love my set of mismatched yet perfectly coordinated tea towels. They are so whimsical and really perfect for drying my hands or setting out for a lovely dinner party, even if it's just for me and my husband. <laughs> Finally, our last project for today are these really nifty cord wraps. For this project, all you need are two pieces of scrap fabric cut into a rectangle measuring three inches by six inches or 7.6 centimeters by 15.2 centimeters. Luckily, my ruler is exactly three inches wide, so it made this entire process really easy to mark and cut. I then use my cutout fabric as a template for cutting out my interfacing because it needs to be cut in the exact same dimensions. Go ahead and attach your interfacing to the wrong side of one of the rectangular fabric pieces. I'm using sew-in interfacing as always, so I'll be attaching it by basting these pieces together at a quarter inch or 0.6 centimeter seam allowance. 
Once your interfacing is in place, you are going to pin your interface and non-interfaces together with the right sides matching along all four raw edges. But before you start to sew, mark one of the longer edges with a little opening of 1.5 inches or four centimeters wide. Sew around all your edges using a half an inch or 1.3 centimeter seam allowance. Next, you'll wanna trim your corners and seams. Then turn your project to the right side through the little opening that you left. And be sure to poke out your corners using a chopstick or the back end of a paintbrush handle. Finally, you'll want to hide your opening seams towards the inside of your project. So simply push those seams towards the inside using your fingers and then pin it shut. Top stitch all around the outer edges of your cord wrap using a 1 8 inch or 0.3 centimeter seam allowance. Finally, it's time to add a closure to the two short ends of your cord wrap. I'm using snaps, but you can easily use Velcro. I've gone ahead and marked my placement for each of my snaps with a little markable pen. It's really hard to see them on this opposite side because of the print, but they are there. And I'm making sure that each side has a different snap piece. This is a much faster process when you're doing Velcro, but I actually quite like the snaps. Voila, no more messy cords. I have to say, I absolutely love how neat all of my chargers are now thanks to these cord wraps. I hope that you have enjoyed these three scrap busting tutorials. I have plans to definitely bring more kinds of tutorials like this to my channel because I find them to be so fun and I really love utilizing like I said, all the little scraps that I produce in my studio. So if you like this tutorial, please feel free to like and subscribe and ring that little bell so that you are always notified of when I come out with a new tutorial because I've got lots of fun ones planned this year that I can't wait to share. <laughs> Bye. You only wanna be here when I'm filming, huh? You're like never near me any other time. And off we go.